Welcome to Bloomers in the Garden. I'm Len Schroeder. And I'm Julio Zamora. You hear it all the time. Fall is for planting. Fall is for planting. Mm -hmm. We're going to explain what makes fall such a great time to plant in our first segment. Now you're convinced it's time to plant. Where to start? Find out during our second segment. This may be your only chance to improve or change the soil. We will explain during our third segment. We always say the three rules to any good design are color, texture, and form. We'll teach you more in our fourth segment. What's bugging you? My pond is losing water. What should I do? We'll tell you how to figure it out in our final segment. So stay tuned, and we'll be right back in the garden right after these messages. Bloomers in the Garden is brought to you each week by Bloomers Home and Garden Center. Bloomers is an award-winning garden center just 20 minutes from Philadelphia. Bloomers has been providing expert advice turning brown thumbs green for over 30 years. At Bloomers, we want you to ask us every question, even if you think it's silly. We share information in a friendly, non-judgmental way that is meant to teach and spread the joy of gardening. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center in Washington Township, Gloucester County. For directions, go to bloomers.com, and we'll see you in the garden. Do you think you have insects eating away your nice, beautiful lawn? Fertilum's Bug Blaster Plus Above and Below is the product for you. Fertilum's Bug Blaster Plus Above and Below not only controls chinch bugs, which is a surface-feeding insect, but also controls grubs, which is a subsurface-feeding insect. It does it all, guaranteed. When most homeowners see their lawn turning brown in the summer, they think grubs. Damage from the larva, Japanese beetle. But in many cases, it could be chinch bugs. Chinch bugs are hard to see because they are so small, and you'd need to get down on your hands and knees to see them. If you misdiagnose your problem, Fertilum's Bug Blaster Plus Above and Below has you covered. The product will control both chinch bugs and grubs. This summer, control your pest problems with Fertilum's Bug Blaster Plus Above and Below. It also may be used in flower beds, on landscape ornamentals, trees, and shrubs. Fertilum's Bug Blaster Plus Above and Below will also control crane fly larvae, ants, mole crickets, sod webworms, bill bugs, and many more. Your property will be pest-free with Fertilum's Bug Blaster Plus Above and Below. So next time you're visiting your favorite garden center, ask for Fertilum's Bug Blaster Plus Above and Below and expect to have the best-looking lawn and landscape in the neighborhood. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or see and hear us by subscribing to Bloomers' YouTube channel. Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley every Saturday. First, wake up with us at 6 a.m. on WNWR The Word at 95.3 FM and 1540 AM. Tune in at 8 a.m. to Bloomers in the Garden Radio on Talk 860 WWDB. A rebroadcast of Bloomers in the Garden Radio is played each Saturday evening at 5 p.m. on The Word, 95.3 FM and 15.40 a.m. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard throughout the New York tri-state area on Classic Oldies, 12.50 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. Hey, we've been telling you for years. Fall is for plantings. Seems like some of you may not believe us, but here are the facts. First of all, plants love warm soil temperatures and cool leaf temperatures. The cooler the ambient temperature in the fall, it doesn't bake the soil like the summertime and encourages roots to grow and anchor in the soil. That that That's is key. probably key. Yeah. The, it's all it's all about the the roots that grow in the fall. What about watering, Julio? Do you have to water as much in the fall? No, you have to water less. You know, we don't have that intense you know uh, dryness that we have in the summer. That's right, and it's a natural rainy season yeah. followed up by winter, where plants are are somewhat dormant, and then another naturally rainy season. So you kind of get two back-to-back rainy seasons so that it can keep those plants um, growing. The only thing in the winter that you really need to worry about is that the winter burn some plants get, but it's generally they have happy roots and they grow out of it. But uh, I tell you, it it is the absolute best time. time. You, You know, it develops plants that are more resistant to 
resistant to drought because those roots are growing deeper. And if you have deeper growing roots, it's past that drought zone in the soil. And I'll tell you what, there's less insect issues and disease issues in the fall. And it's also, it's the end of the insect mating season. So, you know, you're not going to have like your, your plants are not going to be a magnet to insects and you won't have any insect problems until possibly the following late fall. Uh, So again, it is, again, it's a great time to uh, be getting out there and planting a new landscape. Uh, There's also another financial aspect, right, Julio? Oh, yeah, there's always a fan of financial aspect. Well, yeah. well, because garden centers are putting plants, plants on clearance. Yes, that's right. you know, like, hey, they may look a little shop-worn, and they probably are just have been there, but their roots are alive and thriving. They're very healthy. Don't let those yellow spots on the leaves bother you. Um, the amount of sunlight is declining, and the leaves are starting to change color, but the plants themselves are are super healthy because their roots are healthy. It's a great time to be outside too. Putting on, you know, it's 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 nice today. It's a beautiful day oh, yeah. today, mm-hmm. but having a hoodie on oh, and yeah. just being able to work outside or light jacket. It's a great it's a time, time of the year just to be outside. You're not going to be sweating like to death and and really hating, you know, hating life hating because life. you're like <laughs> melting. Yeah. It is a great, a great time. time to plant. Um, and, and again, I want to say, you know, like your local garden center is putting things on clearance. Uh, don't beat them up. I mean, I, I'll never forget. I had, I had a guy. We had, we had yeah. certain plants. We were just overstocked, and it was fall, and, and we needed to get rid of them. We had them 75% off. 75% off. That was out, that's outrageous yeah, and unheard of. <laughs> yeah. The guy, the guy goes, what do you do for cash? <laughs> what do you do for I cash? I must not just block off. I was like, You're, uh, hello, uh, yeah. hello. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, we, we can't anyway, go, can't go any further. <laughs> so your, your garden centers are going to have stuff. Um, some things may change. Yeah. They may like say, guess what? They're, you know, it is taken as is. You, you may not, they may not be warranted Warranty, like yeah. they would be at full price. But honestly, the roots are happy and healthy. They're going to be fine. That uh, they're going to establish. They're going to establish after you plant them. The plants are dying to get planted in the ground. Some are a little pot bound. So you got to make sure that you scarify the roots on the side so that they grow a little bit. How about perennials, Julio? Like we've got some perennials that are not looking great. Yeah, right. Would you have any fear of planting perennials now? No, not at all. You know, like, like you were, we were talking about, you know, the root systems are going to grow right now at this point. So it's not just yeah. woody shrubs. No. It's also, also perennials. perennials. Yeah. Perennials. And again, they're going to grow. They're, they're going to grow. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I saw a very savvy gardener. Uh, buying, we had what we call bloomers yard sale, mm-hmm. and we had some plants in in there. And that uh, she picked up all of those early, I guess it's late winter, early spring flowering plants that were kind of leftovers, mm-hmm. you know. And the so, hellebores, she was hellebores. picking up oh, the yeah. hellebores. <laughs> and what was interesting is like they go somewhat dormant in the summertime, but unless they're in the shade. She saw some with a little bit of new growth, and man, yeah. she gobbled Eat them up. up. Yeah, and that she gobbled them up. She got a deal. Yeah. She got a deal. And it's something that you need to know. And and that garden yeah. centers are more than happy to help. They say, "What's the best deal here? Right. It you is. know, what should I not <clears throat> miss? What should I maybe should I wait till the spring to buy this, or should I buy this mm-hmm. now? Um, if you find plants that you like, buy them. Right. Especially when they're seventy five percent. Where do yeah. you, where now else do you, again? They're not all seventy five percent, but they are on different types of sales, and yeah, some are things are sale. like our our trees are all on clearance right now. Yeah. I mean, so and what I mean by trees is shade and flowering trees, but also ornamental, ornamental. trees. Yeah. Dwarf Japanese maples on sale. sale. Blood good maples yeah. on sale. Uh, we have. <laughs> I'm keeping my eye on and uh, thinking whether it's yeah. going to end up in the back of my car <laughs> but there's a coral bark maple Ooh, yeah. that's on sale that that 
You know, it's like, well, you know. It's tempting, huh? <laughs> it is yeah. tempting. And it's one of those plants where it doesn't have many leaves on it, but, but the coral bark's there yeah, and the roots right. are healthy. Mm-hmm. And Beautiful. it All just. All the way through. Uh, and, and there's some yeah. of those bizarre um, bizarre plants like that Eskimo kiss. Oh, yeah. A type of maple. <laughs> maple and, yeah. Again, go to your local garden center. You'd be surprised what you get. Yeah. Um, this year seems to be a, a year where people. Let's just say took a little time off from yeah. you know their spring landscape mm-hmm. needs, but uh, yeah, they can, I tell you, you what, you can come back. <laughs> get out to your local yeah, garden center and, and take a look around. You know, it's like we just got through Labor Day and you know, mm-hmm. furniture sale, Labor Day. Furniture, you know, yeah, Day it's sale. it's that same type same of type of, of mm-hmm. sales going on at your local it's garden ex- center right yeah. now. So get out there and take a look what they've got. Oh yeah, it's exciting, isn't it? Yeah, have you been putting off putting up a hedge? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Now's the go. time. Mm-hmm. Now is the time. Right. All right. We'll be back in the garden right after this. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Eight zero. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Dreaming of a gorgeous garden? Give your azaleas, rhododendron, blueberries, and evergreens a powerful boost with their number one acid-loving plant food, Espoma Organic Hollytone. Hollytone is a perfect blend of natural long-lasting ingredients that nourish plants for stronger roots, faster growth, and bountiful blooms. Plus, it's easy to use and safe for people, pets, and planet. Visit Espoma.com for a retailer near you and helpful gardening tips. Espoma, a natural in the garden since 1929. Last year, millions of Americans asked the Internet about protecting their lawns and gardens. There's one simple answer. BioAdvanced. Because gardeners have trusted the Blue Bottle for decades. Invasive insects? Blue Bottle. Lawn fungus? Blue Bottle. Japanese beetles? Blue Bottle. A BioAdvanced answer for every question and guaranteed solutions for every problem. BioAdvanced. Get more from the Blue Bottle. BioAdvanced All-in-One Rose and Flower Care controls insects and diseases, plus feeds. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. So, your landscape needs a facelift. Here's where to start. Uh, All right. Get your pens and paper, children. This is going to be a couple of segments where you're going to want to take notes. Are you going to tear out your plants? Or are you going to try to fit other things in? Um, if you're going to try to match, like trying to find large shrubs, like this year we, we understood like where uh, people were trying to, they had old landscapes and they had like maybe a section of that landscape die and they wanted to match like a three foot um, by four foot rhododendron. We had brought some of those big rhododendrons are just to plug in that that size to to replace um, but most of the time large shrubs are going to be hard to find you know you can always cut back your existing plants in your landscape and make them smaller so don't fear the shears so don't fear the shears because you can always cut them back and make them smaller mm-hmm. but honestly in the long run it will be easier mm-hmm. if you just started with a blank canvas. Right. If you keep trying to find plants that, that like for instance, the cheaper the plant, the faster it grows, the more maintenance it's going to need to be kept to size. So just keep that in mind. Just keep that in mind. You need to measure. Yeah. So say cool. you rip everything out. Mm-hmm. And before we go into measurement, it's the plant's full-grown size that will determine your bed shape, your bed shape. You know, you can't fit a round plant in a square bed without it becoming a maintenance issue. 
So you, you're going to have to think. It's like, all right, the plants will, will – these are the type of plants, and they grow three by three. So I have to make sure that it may be only – 18 inches now, but it will grow, it will grow to three by three. So that's the size of the bed that I'm going to make based on its full grown size. And that's how I'm going to determine the shape, whether it's a lazy S or whether it's, if you're looking to do something square, like where you just have a hedge, you're going to determine what type of plant that is, but you also still, how big can you let it grow before you start damaging it? And that's where the helpful garden center guy is going to going to help you there. Yeah. Yeah, but, how many times do we have customers come in and say, oh, you know, my whole garden is overgrown. <laughs> right. <laughs> now we got to rip everything out. <laughs> yeah, it's like, all right, you, you need to do it. Yeah, you got to do it. Um, but, you know, it's also, it, it's, Take your measurements. That's great. So measure the house, measure, you know, and, and get an idea of where that's going to be, how wide you want the bed to eventually get, because um, that will help. I mean, it's, it, it's not just the length and the width of the area. It's the heights of windows, exposure, you know. And, and let me just say, how often do we have, this is a major project, and it, and also it, it can be expensive. How often do you have people? It's like, oh, I got a section. It's like, you know, from here to there. Right. But I've never been to your house. <laughs> yeah. I don't know yeah. what here to there is. Let me show you the picture. You know, and then you'll try to say, it's like, all right, yeah. if the bed starts here, right. where do you think it is? And like, right. you know, <laughs> and, uh, and of course, <laughs> the husband says it's this big, but the wife says, no, it's not. It's this big. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you're really confused. <laughs> Like, oh. You do the we do the best that we can, folks. Yeah, but but true. if you bring measurements, then we can lay it out right in front of you, and we can place the actual plants that you would buy and that you would put in, and that you can see how it looks together. So again, bring measurements, especially the heights of windows. Uh, there's one a, a development in town where instead of having traditional like three foot high window. Its windows are eighteen inches high off the oh. ground. <laughs> yeah, it's like tight. you can put mulch. Yeah, <laughs> but, but it, what happens is you've got to use like a, a lower type of plant that only gets to be that that height, and that a lot of folks don't think about that. And all of a sudden, the windows are all covered up, and we don't we don't want that. Yeah, another situation is your beds are only like two foot, you know, and by you know by ten foot, it's like whew, you know trying to fit anything two in there. Foot. I, I, I mean, yeah, it's like, how about we make that bed a little bigger? But a lot of times it's sidewalks that, yeah, that make it small. Does, and I blame the builders. Yeah, I've really. had some discussions they about the with builders that yeah. were somewhat heated, but they, yeah. they were building the house for building the house sake, mm-hmm. not thinking of the landscape as part of your home. But it is. Mm-hmm. Your landscape will absolutely bring more value to your home than even a new bathroom. It, it is the, the the one thing that you can do. If you're selling your house, tear it out, do a new landscape, you'll be amazed. Mm-hmm. You, you can easily double your money from what you spent on the landscape. Amazing. So, and and here's something that, are you sitting down, everybody? Well, hopefully. This is what a landscape is supposed to cost. 10% of the value of the home. Mm-hmm. Did you hear me Ten percent of the value of the home. I've got about two hundred dollars. Well, that'll get like, you what? <laughs> no, I mean, it's like, wow, a few perennials here, and there. <laughs> right? And and then what happens is that you get like plants that grow so fast because they're cheap. You get cheap plants because they grow fast, mm-hmm. and a guy, and a nurseryman can produce them quick. And then all of a sudden, it's outgrowing the landscape. The landscape. And, uh, and personally, yeah. I, I, that drives me crazy. Drives me crazy. Always, always. And and this is, there are some people that are really over-prepared for this question. Um, <laughs> my exposure is is full sun because it faces the, the west and the east and the south all at the same time <laughs> and that it gets full sun. <laughs> you know, and then you have the other folks that say, no, I have all shade. I have all shade. I all say, right. really? Are you like underneath trees and things? No, it just faces the uh, north the side. side. Reflected sun gives you more sun than you account for, okay? Full sun, I mean, every nursery plant 
is grown in full sun. It's not, they're not hiding hydrangeas in the shade somewhere. You know, they're grown in full sun. They're just, you know, not watered in the bright time of the day. And look, when you have shade, real shade is when you have large shade trees that surround your house. That's shade. That's shade yeah. You know, sun is southern all day sun. Part shade. There you go. What's the difference between part shade and part sun? <laughs> Two hours? I don't know. It's basically the it's basically the same as far as the plants are concerned. And you can really get the majority of all plants to grow in that kind of condition. And that where shade plants will grow in the sun, okay, with maybe some care, like for instance, that you don't want them to get leaf burn by how they're watered, but where sun, where shade plants, um, you know, as sun plants can't necessarily grow in the shade. But again, if you have part shade, part sun, you could pretty much grow anything. Uh, I love when somebody's actually timed the amount of hours they have. They I get four hours sun. Yeah, four hours. I said, really? Oh, it's like, that's... well, you know, June twenty second, you probably have, you know. There, there's 12 hours of daylight. <laughs> you <know? laughs> yeah. Do you still get four hours of sun? Yeah. It's like, oh, I don't know. So, again, it, it's the amount of sun and that it changes uh, throughout the year. Like, uh, like we're getting less and less sun uh, and until we get to the 22nd of December. And guess what, folks? Then the sun switches around and we start getting every day. We get more and more sun. Love that. So, again, it, it's it's – going to be one of those things keep an eye on on what you're where you're putting your plants measurements are key and don't try to fit your plants in the old bed skate the old uh, bed shape you can change your bed shape now you know you can cut it back and make it smaller and and i guess puts whether it's your lawn was was there or you can do other things um but just get your your house's uh, dimensions, heights of windows, and then if you are restricted, like by a sidewalk or something along those lines, where you can only go so far, those are definitely a requirement that you need to address. Okay, yeah. Anything to add, Julio? No, this is a great start. You know, to to look at space is so important. When, you know, we we always have to deal with that. Yep, yep, and it's it's the right plant in the right, right spot. spot. And that, that's what uh, every local garden center is trying to do because they want you as a lifelong customer, not as a one and done customer. So, all right, we are going to talk about soil, our favorite subject, right? When we get back in the garden right after this. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. We are proud to announce that Bloomers in the Garden has partnered with Renewal by Anderson of Greater Philadelphia, Delaware, South Jersey, and Southern Maryland. Renewal by Anderson is the top window and door company in the United States, specializing in replacement windows and doors. You might be thinking right now, what the heck do windows have to do with gardening? Well, Renewal by Anderson makes this beautiful garden bay window that's energy efficient and made from recycled materials. It's perfect for growing the finest indoor plants possible. When you are looking out your windows filled with plants in your beautiful garden, you don't want to see old windows that are cloudy, warped, or even rotting. That's why people in the horticulture community love Renewal by Anderson. Not only do we want our gardens to be beautiful, but their homes as well. Renewal by Anderson participates in horticultural events such as flower shows, earth days, and eco fairs. To get more information and set up a free home consultation, please visit www.philadelphiawindow.com. 
com and be sure to tell them bloomers in the garden sent you you're listening to bloomers in the garden radio listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or see and hear us by subscribing to bloomers youtube channel bloomers in the garden radio is heard in philadelphia and throughout the whole delaware valley every saturday first wake up with us at 6 a.m on wnwr the word at 95 3 fm and 1540 a.m Tune in at 8 a.m. to Bloomers in the Garden Radio on Talk 860 WWDB. A rebroadcast of Bloomers in the Garden Radio is played each Saturday evening at 5 p.m. on The Word, 95.3 FM and 1540 a.m. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard throughout the New York tri-state area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Hey, hold your horses. Don't go out and buy any plants just yet. Mm -mm. Hold it. Now you've got to start thinking about what you can do now before any plants go in the ground. Here's what I'm talking about. How's your grade? Well, I'm sure you were A plus grade. Grade? A plus? Is it? South Jersey's flat. Yeah, it is. You know, and the grade in South Jersey is flat. And, and you can artificially change that grade by adding some soil and having like a low uh, retaining wall built out of stone. I love natural I stone. Like yeah. uh, sorry. You know, the paver walls and concrete block mm-hmm. and that kind of stuff. It's, it's very good as far as some of the creative things that can be done with it. But there's nothing like natural stone. Oh, no, there's and eight. it's not too hard. You can dry stack natural stone. Um, I'm proud to say that uh, Steve Kendall, a friend, friend of mine's house years ago when I was much younger and spry, uh, I, I built a landscape for him and, and I built a dry stacked, it was about four foot retaining wall wow. around his landscape. Awesome. And, and um, I hope it's still there. <laughs> I don't know. I haven't talked to him more. Maybe it fell down. But uh, no, it can. It's it's there. And one of the secrets to using natural stone is that you got to keep the top of each course level. So before you go on to the next course, you got to make sure that it's level. And then when you start with the next course, on top of that, you try to split the seams so they lock in place with the weight of the stone and ever so slightly you have it like where it's just tilted back just a little bit into the grade. Most of the time in again, South Jersey, the walls aren't very tall or it's not very, not very big. Um, But in Northern Jersey, absolutely. Uh, There's a lot of, uh, I mean, (laughs) my hometown where I lived, you know what the name of my street was? No. Rockledge Terrace. So we know what's going so on. So like there. North Jersey, you know, the, the elevations are very different. Um, and again, you can still use dry stack retaining wall and natural stone just looks so good. But getting off of that, this is the one time where you can change your grade you can add soil and make it like a berm you can you can improve your soil certainly by adding bumper crop and humus and manure and peat moss and and mix that in because your landscape is more than just trees or shrubs right Oleo? yeah it's more than that perennials perennials, yeah. perennials. annuals yeah when you're putting annuals in and bulbs, and bulbs yeah You're going to plant that in in that soil and that now's your chance where you get to improve it so that you have good soil. Not Gosh, how often do you hear, oh, I got clay. I got got clay. clay. Well, if you've got clay and you have the chance to improve that clay into a good loam by adding in organic matter, now is the time. Now is the time to do it. Don't don't just kind of, nah. Let it go. Now. I'm going to plant one plant at a time and throw some dyed mulch down. <laughs> black dyed mulch. <laughs> yeah, black dyed mulch. There you go. Yeah, it's even better. <laughs> <sighs> we try so hard. <laughs> we, <laughs> we are educators. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, it's, it's the one time that you can do this. So don't run out and try to, you know, that it's a burden and you just want to get it over with quick. Just Take so, your time. Yeah. Take your time. Um, 
again, adding elevation to a design make it more dynamic. It does. And it's also where, you know, that we talk about boulders and there's these things called like one man boulder, two man boulders. And they're basically just that it's like, you know, a boulder that it takes two men to pick up and the natural stone that looks like it's from like the Poconos or somewhere that is um, that where it's natural to what you would say you know, it doesn't look like it's from Arizona, you know, <laughs> where it looks like it's from, you know, either it's Western the there. Delaware uh, Water Gap yeah. or, or in the somewhere, you know, in the local area. Even if you're digging in and you find you have rock, put those aside because you can always use them as uh, part of your landscape. Yeah, awesome. Make sure you're thinking about your soil. Just think about your soil, improve the soil. Before you get, you know, planting and installing your landscape, you know, you dig a hole twice the size of the root ball of the plant. You mix in half bumper crop and half the regular soil that you just dug out of the hole. You mix it all together and then that's how you plant. Then you put that in and that you want to make sure that the top of the roots are not below the level line of the soil even if you've artificially and created it to where it's higher you want it to be at that level or else you can smother your plants you know my son carl that does a lot of the landscaping at bloomers where he just drives them crazy when he sees you know he calls them plant volcanoes Volcanoes, (laughs) where it's like they brush all the soil and they put it around the stem of the the, or the trunk and it's just it smothers the plant kills it it, so again you want that root system to be slight you know slightly raised or level with the existing grade Mm -hmm. not below you're going to mulch after that and that that will help uh, with with it drying out and such but again, you don't want it to be buried too deep. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, well, you got anything to add about the soil? I always say to everybody who comes in, the foundation is so important because without that, you're going to fail. And it'll be a slow death later on. It will. You know? It will. And, and you'll wonder, it's like, how come my plants don't look good? Hey, when people come in, they have plant problems. There's only two things. One, it's environmental issue, meaning somebody planted them wrong or is overwatering or something along those lines, or it's an insect or disease. Uh, most of the time, honestly, it's an environmental issue where it's something that's been done wrong to it. And a lot of time it's overwater, planted too deep, those kind of things. So now's your time to pay attention to those things. That's before you go out and buy any plants. Uh, hey. Next landscape project, go out there and use some stone in your landscape. It's going to look great. It is. We'll be right back in the garden right after this. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Fertilome's triple action contains 70% neem oil and 0.25% pyrethrins as a concentrate and ready to spray. It is an insecticide, fungicide, and miticide labeled to use on vegetables, fruits, nuts, herbs, spices, and ornamentals. This organic OMRI-listed product controls a wide variety of insect pests and diseases, including aphids, scale, spider mites, white flies, rust, leaf spot, and powdery mildew. This insecticide is an all-in-one bottle that will cure just about 
any problem you may run into throughout the year. Fertile Homes Triple Action has been helping gardeners across the country for years. Best to apply in late evening and early morning hours. Mix one ounce, which is equivalent to two tablespoons in a gallon of water. The best part is triple action may be used up to the day of harvest. So the next time you are visiting your favorite garden center, ask for Fertilum's triple action and expect to have the best looking plants in the neighborhood. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or see and hear us by subscribing to Bloomers' YouTube channel. Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley every Saturday. First, wake up with us at 6 a.m. on WNWR The Word at 95.3 FM and 15.40 a.m. Tune in at 8 a.m. to Bloomers in the Garden Radio on Talk 860 WWDB. A rebroadcast of Bloomers in the Garden Radio is played each Saturday evening at 5 p.m. on The Word, 95.3 FM and 15.40 a.m. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard throughout the New York tri-state area on Classic Oldies, 12.50 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. Every week, we talk about the foundations of any good planting is... Color, texture, and form, huh, Lane? Amen, brother. Mm-hmm. I tell you, it, whether it's a combo pot or your, your new landscape that you're working on, it's color. So let's talk about just color. We'll isolate that for a moment. Your house, okay, is the canvas and the plants are the paint. So if your house is cream-colored siding or gray, brick stucco, you know, what goes good together? Mm-hmm. So on those types of, of houses, for instance, red and burgundy and blues go good together. So we're talking about red and burgundy plants. You know, write this down. I hope you got your pencil out. Dwarf barberry. Sand cherry. Sand cherry. Japanese maple. Well, Japanese maple. Our, one of the favorites. Right? Yeah. Uh, Physiocarpus. Wajilia. Wajilia, yeah. It's a beautiful plant. All of those are great red plants, mm-hmm. burgundy plants. A lot of them have burgundy in the name. Um, the the dwarf barberry now that some of like the older varieties were considered invasive by well-meaning politicians mm-hmm. who wanted to show they were doing stuff. <laughs> <laughs> But that's another show. <laughs> so I think they record over in the hallway. Oh, no. Yeah, back here. <laughs> over here, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it, it, it's important to, to get good plants and that it's always changing. And, and again, the newer varieties are um, sterile so that they don't produce seed and they don't, you know, end up being, uh, I guess, repopulate the countryside. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Say now, nice if you're looking for blue, one of the best blues are the dwarf blue spruce. Oh, yeah. There are lots of blue junipers, but be careful. You got to make sure of how fast they grow because there are some dwarf junipers, like, for instance, a blue star juniper that grows slow. But then there's blue head side juniper that is like, it'll be gigantic before you know it. So make sure that you're paying attention to the tags and the descriptions. Blue fescue. Blue Atlas Cedar, both weeping and the upright. Now, the upright one is going to get big. That would be right, more of a corner plant. And that the weeping variety is going to be something where it's kind of a, it's a show if plant. Look at me. Yeah. 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 It's like, I'm impressed. Yeah. I'm impressed. <laughs> Dark greens. Dark greens and golds. Chartreuse. A lot of times the dark green plants are like the frame of the pictures or of a painting that the frame is not supposed to stand out. It's the painting that it brings forth. So the dark greens are similar to that where the dark greens are the frame to make the other plants stand out. So just keep that in mind. So some dark green plants, mugo pines, Mm, both mugo pines give two different things, right? Well, one is the color, but it's also the texture. Texture. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Hinoki cypress, and that there are different types of Hinoki cypress. So make sure that you're reading your tags 
and that you talk to your, your salesperson at your garden center at your local independent garden center, okay, they will know the answer. Is this a dwarf variety? Is this something that gets big? Because there are, there are varieties that look similar where one doesn't get more than like two or three feet and the other one gets to be six to ten. So you got to make sure that you're buying the right kind because it's the right plant in the right spot. Japanese holly, different shapes. Mounding small shapes, like I was talking about, like how the 18-inch windows, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can use Hellerai holly in that instance. Mm -hmm. But then there's other varieties where there's Hetsai and there's other types of of um, Japanese holly, mm -hmm. And, and including in that are those real narrow that we can't keep in stock. It seems <laughs> like sky pencils, yeah, right? Really. Where they're they're like columnar little, you know they they have their place. Yeah, they do. Okay, yeah. getting a little overused mm -hmm. as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. But right plant, right spot. Uh, cephalotaxis. What's the best thing about cephalotaxis, Julio? This is a quiz. Taxes is uh, cephalotaxis. You know, their um, the best part is they are not eaten by the deer, right? Yeah, that deer don't eat it. Where your regular taxes, like your older varieties, like where Hetsai okay. and uh, Hatfield and, and the old varieties, Densiforma, those taxes or ewes. Uh, they are eaten up by deer. Mm. Actually, I have one that's at the head. It's a real door fried. <laughs> they got it. It like, oh, yeah. Like it like looks that. like, you know, I saw this family of deer. They come which, in. again, it's, I'm still like, I'm still in the how cool stage of deer. But this family of deer ate my cephalotaxis. They come in. Not cephalotaxis. They ate my, my dwarf uh, taxis. Oh, gosh. Yeah. What are you going to do? Don't fear the shears. Don't <laughs> yes. fear the deers. deers. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they yeah. pruned it a little. <laughs> but cephalotax is, is a yeah. real good green. Blue holly. Blue holly is not necessarily a blue, but it's a really, 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 really dark green or a dark blue so dark that it looks green. Um, again, there's so many other chartreuse and yeah. gold. Gold thread cypress, golden barberry, gold spirea. Different ferns, variegated liriope, yeah. different color and texture. All right. Now, the next thing is you got to break up those things. You want to break up textures. And, and what would you use to break up some texture, Julio? Yeah, you have grasses, which are really great. You know, they soften uh, your landscape up a little bit there, too. That's right. And there's dwarf ones and there's yeah. tall ones oh. that get to be oh, as sure. big as six feet. And there's yeah. some like the, the, the oh. Hamlin varieties that are only about two, two feet. Point, yeah. And they have different looks to them, like where they go dormant, mm -hmm. but they also have foxtails or they have different types of of fruit on it. And I love um, the the penicetum varieties because when they have their uh, their 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 foxtail out, it dances in the wind. It it's does. like yeah. when you get a breeze, it kind of just jiggles. All over you know, it, it, it's a great great way to break it up. If you like grasses but don't like the you know them to be too big, daylilies are a perfect thing. Yeah, another one. Ferns, Ferns. dwarf conifers, hookera. Hookera, another one. Yeah. And another texture, hydrangeas. Like like we're talking about the blue and the pink and the big leafed hydrangeas. They have that big leaf, and so that gives a different texture to it than would some of the other varieties that have smaller Small. leaves or something like that. Mm -hmm. So another, it's a great one. Um how about flowering plants and flowering times? Late winter, oh, yeah. early spring, so January through March, viburnums, camellias, yes. witch hazel. Witch hazel yeah. If we're talking about early spring, mm -hmm. March to April, PJMs, caria, mm -hmm. forsythia, other types of viburnum. Wow. Now, PJM, by the way, is it like a cross between a rhododendron and azalea. azalea. Yeah, they're pretty. Um, right? Pieris, Pieris, another one. Uh, Mid-spring, April and May, Azaleas, sand cherries, quince. Quint, oh, what a beautiful plant. Yeah, forgot about Ooh, quince, didn't yeah. you? Quince, and they worked on new colors to where yeah. it's like a, Orange. it's almost like a peachy color. Peachy, yeah. Um, rhododendrons, dutzia, lilac. Mm -hmm. Late spring, mop hydrangeas, like we were just talking about, breaking up textures. Roses, 
Spirea. Well, it's roses, by the way. Don't don't turn your up uh, your nose up at roses. Roses are the one plant that will bloom all summer, come back every year. So it's um, you know from start to finish that they're they're going to be in bloom. They are going to need to get a little bit of a spraying now and then, but for what it gives you, it's worth just you know spraying it every couple of weeks and keeping it clean. Potentilla, Potentilla yeah. yeah, I'm not a fan. Yeah. St. John's wort, I am. Beautiful. They look yeah. like giant buttercups. Yeah, they do. Uh, Abelia, fan. Mm-hmm. Not only that, it attracts hummingbirds. Yeah. Summertime, got roses again. Mm-hmm. Budlia, okay. Mm-hmm. Budlia's, uh, the, the pugsters are still pugsters, my favorite. Yeah, they're great. Spireas, uh, panicle hydrangeas, the yeah. white the white mm-hmm. ones that, are, that look so great mm-hmm. um, in that they're now and that they – they not only look great when they're in flower, but they also look great when they go dry and they're on the plant. Oh, so, yeah. so it has a – it fades green. from like a white to, a, you know, some go like deep red, yeah. some pink. Pinkish, yeah. So great that's another type of hydrangea that flowers at a different time than, than your macrophylla types. Mm-hmm. All right. So here's some tips. Tallest things on the corner. No soldiers. <laughs> soldiers. No soldiers. <laughs> no soldiers by the door. Yeah, yeah. You don't want sentries out there that are, you know, real tall things by yeah. the doors. It's like, uh oh, look, it's 10 soldiers are there. I remember the, you we, know, had, you, we, had that, we had that in my house. I, I, <laughs> at one point, my, my father did that. <laughs> this guy, right? So, <laughs> but where, you know, the shortest things should be by the door. Yeah. Because the whole point of the landscape is to emphasize the entrance. Again, avoid the soldier thing. Yeah. All right. You can have plants that are taller, but not not like perfectly sheared, uh, you know, Alberta spruce. I mean, yeah, gosh. Yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> break up your plantings with perennials. Uh, you, with herbaceous perennials, you get a different look and a different feel. Um and don't use too many different plants. Like, like you don't want it to make it look like your your garden center threw up at your doorstep. You, <laughs> yeah, you want to do just keep it pretty simple because you want to have reoccurring themes of color, texture, and form throughout your landscape so that your corners match your other corners and that as it comes in towards the door, you get some, you know, you can match texture, you can match color, you can match identical plants. Monty Don, he's a, you're a big fan of Monty Don, right? Oh, yeah, Gardner's World. Yeah. Yeah, he's great. Yeah. No landscape needs more than seven different plants. That's it. That's what he said. And he does a lot of big landscapes. Oh, he does. <laughs> uh, rule of threes, mm-hmm. you know, plant clusters of threes. And that where you keep them, you know, you may have, instead of having, you know, where one plant would be, you'll put a cluster of three. Like, say, liriope, for instance, um, variegated liriope type of grass. It gets a purple flower. You know, you put three of them in, and that that may take up a cluster that's maybe three by three or or, because it's a smaller plant. But then you want to do some of the other things, like on the end of the landscape, like on the corner where you've got a big – a big plant, you can put in a cluster of three different other plants that that maybe you know take up an area that's six by six. Um, so again, it, it's rules of three, and repeat the themes and colors through the landscape. I just said, mentioned that. So again, it's it's going to to have that same feel that it matches from one corner to the other. Yes, you know. um, it will depend on the landscape of the and the I'm sorry, the house that you're dealing with, mm-hmm. but. Fall is for planting, That's folks, mm-hmm. but spring is for selection. Honestly, as a businessman, I have absolutely no incentive to bring in fall plants like I used to because everyone expects them to be 50% off. Mm-hmm. I hate it, mm-hmm. and unfortunately, it's that the public has been trained and that you're going to get the bigger selection in spring because I actually can, you know, I, I mean, I can can make money. My, my you know, our, our people can, uh, you know, there's we meet payroll. We do all this. Other, we can't survive at 50% off, okay, yeah. unless it's a fake 50% off. And there are some guys doing that. Right. You know, it's, oh, it's $100. It's like it's $50 this week. It's like, well, wait a minute. I just saw that plant for $50 at Bloomers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like, oh, no, but ours are 50% off. Uh, you need to be pretty shrewd um, 
But honestly, I think that the industry needs to reevaluate. Um, I would rather bring in and have two seasons. You know, by gosh, it's the fall is the best time to plant, right? It so is. why don't I have the best selection now? Ah, uh, brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's gonna it's work. Just, Not gonna work. <laughs> everybody's everybody's industry has its own thing. That's right. And always, always, always design with full grown plants in mind and consider shearing and the maintenance issues you'll have if you don't. All right. We are over time. Mm. <laughs> Sam's looking at me. Uh, we'll be on. right back in the garden right after this. Spring is here. And people have a lot of questions about weed and feed. There's one simple answer. Bio-advanced 5-in-1 weed and feed. Just one application kills lawn weeds and prevents new weeds and crabgrass up to six months. And if crabgrass is already growing, it kills that too. Plus, 5-in-1 feeds and greens your lawn. Bio-advanced 5-in-1 weed and feed. Get more from the blue bag. Here's the dirt on potting mixes. They're not all created equal. A Spoma organic potting mix gives roots the ideal balance of air and moisture. It contains a special blend of beneficial mycorrhiza to help grow stronger roots, bigger plants, and more bountiful blooms. Try a Spoma organic potting mix indoors and out for all your potted flowers, vegetables, and you'll see why it's the best. Visit Espoma.com for a retailer near you. Organic potting mix from Espoma, a natural in the garden since 1929. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. So what's bugging me? Uh, my pond is leaking. Oh, no. <laughs> I have a leak in my pond. Oh. So, all right. So what, what are you going to do about it? Okay. So here's the series of things. If you own a pond and you, you probably have had a water leaking or disappearing, here's what you need to do. First, is it the liner or is it the plumbing? Hmm. Turn off your pump. Turn off, turn off, turn off your aerator. Your fish will be all right. Fill up the pond to the full level and let it sit for a day or so and see if the water level goes down. Hey, if the water level goes down, then there's a hole in your liner and there's liner patches that you can use and follow the water line looking for a hole and make sure that you've got your glasses on. Because <laughs> it could be small, small. But if you're, if it didn't go down or, or and you've got another issue, more than likely it's going to be in your plumbing. So that means a fitting, a place where it, it screws into a filter or your spillway. So turn, turn on your system, okay, and see if it goes down. And you got to search your connections to look for a leak. What happens if they're they're all tight? Everything is good. You know, my UV's tight as a drum. Nothing wet there. There's no. Uh, I've got a couple of different fittings. I've got a couple valves. Everything looks good. Then you've got to go and decide. Okay. Oh, is water getting under your liner? That could, could, be, be. could be. Could be. Yeah. Could be. Depending on how the pond was built, um, there could be a spot where you overlaid a piece of liner for a waterfall and that water from the waterfall is tracing through the waterfall and getting under the liner. Make sure you look for that and make sure it's not getting under a seam. And then you got to also you know, double check your, your plate connections where your skimmer is connected or your spillway is connected to the liner because, hey, these things get old and they, they pull through. And what happens is that creates a gap and you can have a problem there. So, I mean, that's, that's something a lot of times where you'll need to reset that. Um, I'll tell you, uh, landscape foam, you know, landscape uh, pond foam is important. You know, re-siliconing that face plate that connects the skimmer or the um or your spillway to make the waterfall you know those those a lot of times are the hidden problems are the hidden problems um but most of the time most of the time 
there's a hole that like a rock slid in or something else happened or you have a dog. <laughs> yeah, go went in. I have a dog. I had a dog had anyway. A, yeah. yeah. I, I, had a, I had a big happy lab yeah, that yeah. He loved the water. go in the pond. Yeah. Oh, it just drive me crazy because <laughs> he would stink when he got out. <laughs> anyway, so yeah. maybe like his – Paul oh, went into it. So yeah. <laughs> take a look. If you've got questions, you need help with trying to, yeah. with anything pond related, please give us a call on the hotline. That hotline number is 609 685 1880. We'll be back in the garden right after this. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. If you're like me, then you absolutely love birds. The Bird Sanctuary at Bloomers Home and Garden Center has you covered. They're dedicated to the care and feeding of wild birds of all sorts. You want to bring more birds to your yard? Then you got to see this place. Bloomers has a huge flock of feeders, bird houses, bird seed, and much, much more. Want to feed the birds and not the squirrels? They have this absolutely cool bronze bird feeder that will drive those sneaky squirrels nuts. They'll be moving to the next door neighbor in no time. OMG! Bloomers have these absolutely adorable birdhouses that will turn your yard into the perfect bird B&B. They carry all types of wild bird seed, suet, seed cakes, and mealworms. Bloomers stocks, Lyric, Coles, CNS, Pine Tree Farms, and much, much more that will keep those beautiful birds coming back for more. Bloomers Home and Garden Center is located in Washington Township in Gloucester County. For more information and directions, check them out on the web at bloomers.com. Bloomers Home and Garden Center, you got to see this place. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or see and hear us by subscribing to Bloomers' YouTube channel. Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley every Saturday. First, wake up with us at 6 a.m. on WNWR The Word at 95.3 FM and 1540 a.m. Tune in at 8 a.m. to Bloomers in the Garden Radio on Talk 860 WWDB. A rebroadcast of Bloomers in the Garden Radio is played each Saturday evening at 5 p.m. on The Word, 95.3 FM and 1540 a.m. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard throughout the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Julio down by the school yard. Yes, Julio, oh, doing yes. your landscape. Oh, yes. If you have questions, please call the hotline 609 685 1880. Go to your local garden center. They've got deals, but they also have the information you'll need to make your new landscape a success. See you next week. See you in the garden. See you in the garden. <laughs> 